Okay, I'm back. I had to go to it real quick. Let's speak to you and get you know the shopkeeper. Mm. Good to see you, Harbinger. Hope you're doing well today. Is there anything I can do for you? Where do you get your materials from? Mine in the smelting tutorial. Other than the deliveries we get here to the stronghold, I mine for the resources myself. How can I do that? Ah, you want to try your hand at mining, eh? Well, you've come to the right man. You can find mining that cross just about everywhere during your troubles. Oh, that's a horrible hiccup. You just have to know where to look. Typically, mining out cross can be found near hillsides or exposed rock. Rarer materials will be found in hard to reach areas like caves or high up. If you're interested, I can give you some quick starter jobs to get you on the right track for mining. Sounds good. All right then, let's get to work. To start you off, I suggest looking for a coal outcrops. They're extremely common, so you shouldn't have any issues finding them wherever you go. I suggest going to Parford Lake. There's a nice rocky area that has plenty of outcrops that's not too far away. Once you mine five coal outcrops, return to me on it. Okay, good to see you, Arbiter. Hope you're doing well today. Is there anything I can do for you? Let's see what you got in stock. So, I do like the thought of having either a halberd or a great axe. But right now, that's not what I'm going for. I think having a ranged weapon is just a smart idea. Having something that I can hit people from far away from uh, where I'm at would just be great. I can only get a shot bow right now. But then I also need arrows. Okay. And then, uh, the issue is, this isn't fully on my screen. I thought it wasn't. Give me. Okay, now everything's on screen. Very nice. So, the short bow and the arrows, because this way I can actually see how much gold I've got. I'd say 30 arrows should be good. I feel like that should be a decent amount. Awesome. Um. Hey, run increase to level three. I'm guessing you teach me how to cook, Charles. Hello. Hey, champ. Feeling package? Uh. I am. I can whip you up something. How about how does a honey glazed ham sounds? That sounds delicious. Here you go. Say, do you have any interest in cooking? I love an extra hand around here in the kitchen. I'm interested in learning. Great. Be best to start with something simple. Let's start with the basic stew. Hang on, wait. What? Okay. Now we have, here are the ingredients. A cabbage, potato, and a carrot. Like the name implies, a super basic stew. You can cook up at the oven behind me, so please use all the ingredients I gave you, and you should be able to whip up the stew in no time. Doesn't matter what order the ingredients are ready, so feel free to toss them in there however you like. You got it. Still working on it. Let me know or let me know when you complete it. So, I guess I woke up to this. Need to interact. Do I even have... So, a carrot... Cabbage and potato. Do I have a potato? I do have a potato. And then cook. And the basic stew. Lovely. And this heals 150 HP. Okay. Nice. Okay. How's the basic stew coming along? Did it. Great work. Did you know I said you learned the recipe when you cooked it for the first time? Now you can order cook that recipe, given that you have the ingredients, of course. Never hesitate to experiment with ingredients. Some recipes will call for multiple of the same ingredients, some are just a single ingredient. Here's a test for you. Take this wheat. And when you turn that wheat into a loaf of bread, here's a heat. Create here's a hand. Creating a loaf of bread will require four flour. Got it. So I need wheat and flour, but do I even have flour? Uh Some milk, bread. I don't have flour. Okay. Roger. Uh, oh, have I leveled up again? I didn't even realize. 
Does that mean a new skill point? Uh, increase our health again. Sure. And this time... I wouldn't mind a bit more mana. Because I, I might go a bit of a sword build kind of guy, you know? Skill trees, magic, uh, druidism. Yeah, I'm definitely grabbing that. Turn into a goblin well, trick enemies so they will not attack you unless you attack them. That's pretty cool. So how do I actually add these to my uh, thing imaging? Do I just drag them? Uh Okay. <laughs> oh, what? I'm floating. Wee. Um Oh gosh, the controls in this thing are hard to use, but okay, cool. What if I turn into a direwolf? I can't do that until my form ends. How do I cancel it early, though? So no way to cancel it early. Guess not. Okay, hello, hello there. Good to see you, friend. Is there something I can help you with? I want to restore the stronghold to its former glory. Well, I'd say the castle itself is in relatively great condition. Not much worse than it has been a few centuries ago. What I mean to say is that the former glory you speak of didn't come from the thickness of the walls or how impregnable the defences were. It came from outside the walls. You see, just centuries ago, just outside the walls of this castle was a village. A village full of people dedicated to the Harbingers. People flocked here because it was a beacon of hope and protection. The very reason your blood was given to your ancestors. That was the glory of the stronghold. How can we restore the glory? Rebuilding. Any of the plots out there are right for the taking. With enough dedication, you could have your very own village outside these castle walls. Be sure to take a glance at the sign beyond the castle bridge so I'll give you an overview of the status of your village. Okay. I'm just here to talk, actually. Ah, I see. Come talk to the lonely quartermaster, eh? Well, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. What's in your mind? You worked here when my father was alive, right? That's correct. He hired me. He spent a lot of time at this very pub, in fact. So it's true what everyone says. He was a drunk. Ah, lad. Unfortunately, none of us are perfect. Not even harbingers. Like yourself, he had his moments of greatness, and he no doubt had his lows. He was very conflicted with himself. What do you mean? Very nice, he'd go on and on about how he brought shame to the bloodline and how he could never live up to his ancestors. He said he'd be the first harbinger to not be greeted by Ezros when he died. He failed to see the greatness within him and the great things he did, especially for the folk in Elder Glen. He just couldn't sway his mind from the constant negativity and unfortunately, as you know, took his own life after you were born. I wish I could have met him. So do I, boy. He was a great man, despite his shortcomings. Don't let what people say get to you. They don't know him like Geoffrey and I do. Thank you, Mr. Wells. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, you double in potion crafting, don't you? I do. It's one of my passions. Are you taking an interest in it? I am interested in it, but I've never tried it before. Fantastic. If you'd like, I could walk you through crafting a basic potion. Sure. How exciting. All right, let's get to it. I have a few basic potion ingredients here. I'll give you a guild leaf and some bone dust. Head over to the potion crafting table to begin the process. Each ingredient can be prepared in different ways. The way an ingredient is prepared can dramatically change the effect it has on the potion. For example, chopping the guild leaf is the best way to prepare it if you're looking to make a healing potion. Combining that with the heated effects from bone dust is a great way to make basic healing potion. Go and try it out and let me know how it goes. I'll go and try it out. So... This. Um, you need to begin potion crafting. Chop should be guild leaf, he said. Chopped, yeah. 
And then... This should be... I'm guessing all this is something different. Cooled, chopped, ground, heated. Okay. Increase health by... Restore health by 35 points. Do self-regeneration for 60 seconds. Uh, lesser potion of healing. That's a health poultice. Try that. No. Uh. Weak potion. Sure. Okay, you can actually have a look at the recipe. You can write down recipes and read another useful no knowledge. Begin a new page. So... Uh... Weak potion equal one chopped guild leaf. I actually really like this. Uh, plus one heated bone. Uh, one heated bone. Okay. And do I close that down? It would still be there. Oh, that is cool. Very nice torch. Very nice torch. Return to Pembroke. Good to see you, friend. Is there something I can help you with? About that potion you wanted me to make. Ah, oh, yes. How'd it go? I made it. Well done, my boy. Now you know the very basics. Feel free to use my potion crafting table anytime. Potion crafting can be a complex and interesting process. Mix and match any ingredients to make powerful and interesting potions. Thanks, Pembroke. Appreciate it, buddy. You really helped me out there. So you got a class. I can't do your... Hang on. Any luck figuring out about love? I still can't figure it out. Want to wait you for it? Yes, please. Combine two wheat will create flour. Using four flour will create a loaf of bread. Okay. Right. So combine two wheat makes flour. Oh, uh, wait. There we go, bread. Okay, lovely. Got it. Hello, Charles. I knew what figuring out to make that loaf of bread. I figured it out. I knew you could do it. That's the basic of cooking. Honestly, it's just trial and error. Eating a good meal can offer unique and powerful buffs. I always pick a good meal before heading out on my travels. Also, don't be afraid to ask around for recipes. People like tavern keepers will be willing to share their recipes with you. Thank you for the beginner's course, Charles. Of course, always happy to help. Lovely. Okay. Okay. Need to be careful not to attack somebody. I don't know whether there's like a guard system or something. The controls are very janky for a druid. That's for sure. Take some getting used to, but I wonder if the more I use it, the more skilled I get at it. Like, is that a thing? Hmm. Greetings, Harbinger. Was there something you needed? Do you need any help around here? To be honest, yes. You see, lots of goblin mold has been growing along the castle walls. What's goblin mold? It's a type of fungus that drives goblins absolutely nuts. They love the stuff. Could you pick it? It releases a punching odor that, that's sure to attract goblins. Last time I tried clearing out the goblin mold, I was a, a mold, I was attacked by a goblin. 
They only made it away with my life. Tossing the goblin mold distracted the bugger. It gave me time to run back to the walls where Geoffrey was able to dispatch the goblin. I could get rid of the mold. Would you really? That would help me greatly. Awesome. So. This is getting very interesting. It's a lot to take in. It's all around the outside of the walls. Just bring the mold back to me so I can properly dispose of it. Ten goblin molds should do the trick. Um, this is a lot to take in, obviously, like I said. Um, and I apologise we haven't really got any combat done yet. But right now, we're just trying to figure out how this all works. Uh, is this goblin mold? No. How can I tell what goblin mold looks like? this stuff? Then by herd of mushroom can be collected. Okay, so this is goblin mold. Okay. We get XP for foraging. Nice. But we are learning the game. And um, we'll get into combat. No problem. Oh! Oh, hi! Hi! Um... No! Bad goblin. Yeah, there's no way I'm hitting him up there. Cheeky. Oh, hi. You know what? Let's try our druid magic. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, you mess with my wolf form. Take you all on. Anybody else? So I can't collect stuff while in this form. Oh wait, just pressing E just cancelled it. Okay, cool. It's worse than it's goblin buggy that's going to ambush me. Where are you at? I'm waiting for you. No? No more goblins want to ambush me? Oh, hi! Okay, goblin fang. Lovely. Let's try this slow motion. Okay. Ah! Yeah! Yeah! Wolf form! Ha! Yeah, get torn to pieces. You want to go up off the ground? No. no. Gobble. When you press E to cancel it. Lovely. Okay. Nice. Well. Is it all the goblin mold? I believe so, potentially. So you can't gather from these, he's just, uh, okay. So apparently we can fish. To catch a fish, simply click the left mouse button when the fish icon is between the two gold bars. A successful click will increase your fishing meter. Once the fishing meter is full, you'll catch the fish. You manage to click when the fish is on the green bar in the very middle, you'll execute a critical pull. Matching, making the fishing meter increase by a large amount. You also gain bonus fishing XP each time you get a critical pull. To be rewarded if you catch the fish. Missing a hit will decrease your fishing meter. If the fishing meter is completely emptied, you lose your fish. Some areas offer rare and unique fish which can be sold or used in cooking recipes. Rarer the fish, the more difficult it be to catch, so always be ready. Some NPCs know good fishing spots and so never hesitate to ask if you can. Okay. Wait, what? Was that not.
Okay. Dope. Okay, nice. Okay. Pretty cool. I like it. I like the mini game. Simple, easy to understand. Not complicated. Ooh, soggy sandwich. Okay. Nice. Okay, well, we can explore some more fishing later. Well, for the most part, let's go and deliver this uh, stuff in. Let's put our sword away. I don't want to make him feel like I'm going to smack him in the face, you know? Have you managed to get rid of that goblin mold? Here's the 10 goblin mold. That's the stuff. Nicely done. Hopefully, we won't have to worry about goblins plaguing the gates any longer. Indeed. You've got an exclamation mark above your head still. Why? Have you secured those goblins yet? Let's be on the boat. Follow the road outside the castle to it first for us. Where I spotted them. Okay. So. Exclamation mark doesn't necessarily mean you've not taken the quest from them. So I guess a question mark means. They have a quest. Exclamation mark means you haven't handed it in or completed it yet. Mary Osterhout. Hello, Harbinger. I hope you are well. What can I do to help around here? I'd hate to bother you with such mundane chores. However, if you are interested, the Stronghold could do with some more decorations. I see you are the one who should dictate how the grounds looks. Decorations? That's right. You can decorate the grounds here at your Stronghold however you like. If you'd like, I'd give you a beginner's course. Sure. Let's get into it then. First things first, you'll need materials to construct decorations. Take these logs, you can use them to construct stick fences. Place them wherever you like. I should have enough, lo you should have enough logs there for at least five fences. Return to me when you've built five stick fences, remember. The entire area is out in front of the stronghold. It's yours to decorate. So, so the entire area. Let's open the tab. Uh, Open the radio menu by pressing time. Yes, in crafting, right? The bottom left is your construction menu. Open up this menu to view all items you can currently construct. Uh, fences, wasn't it? Stick fences she wanted. Let's start off with a simple looking place near the water. That seems like a great idea. There's no snapping, it seems. Which could irritate some players if they have, like, an LCD. But for me, I don't really mind so much. Okay. Hello, Harbinger. Hope you are well. I built those fences. Great work. Decorations like that will attract people to your village. Depending on the kind of decoration you place, it will increase the chance that certain people will visit. Could you explain more? Of course, I'll give you an example. If you place lots of engineer themed items, it's more likely that dwarves and artifices will come to visit. If you construct items like graves and tombs, I'm sure that will attract ghostly visitors and dark magic users. If you're interested in making more progress, I could help guide you through constructing your first building. Yes, please. Exciting. We're finally going to breathe some new life into the grounds. First things first, you need to come up with a name for your village. You can do this at the village overview board, outside the stronghold gates. Originally, the village was named Ironhaven. If you want to keep that name, then we can move on. You can change the name at any time. I'll go change the name. Great. 
I'll be I'll wait here for you. So where do I do this? You said outside the gates. Does that mean over here? Because I don't have any gates. That's the problem. Is this where we're on about? Uh, no, that's not it. Ah, rename the village over there. Okay. Means we'll level our skills while we're actively moving around. It's a good idea. Also, I'll be wary of stamina in case I do get attacked. Need to interact. Iron Haven. Okay, what shall we name this lovely village here? Uh. Call it Riverwell, because we're right. It's right near the river. Seems nice. Not coming events. I don't know what all that stuff is, but for now, Riverwell. Lovely. What's this? Open plot menu. Oh, okay. The Wizard Tower grants you access to the arcane workbench as well as magician shop. The tower also grants you a permanent mana pool boost. Okay, so that's cool. Hello, Harbinger. Hope you are well. I changed the name of the village. Fantastic. You're one step closer to starting your own little village. Now let's get to the fun part. Construction. Let's start with something simple. A building that won't take too much material. Let's go with a bakery. Just some pine wood, stone and some wheat to get the baker started. Head out into the area in front of the stronghold. There are plenty of open plots where you can assign a building to be constructed. Simply approach one of the signs and choose bakery. You got it. Once you have started the construction, return to me and we can plan on how to gather the resources. Okay. I see the goblin encampment over there. Um, oh, okay, oh, I get it, I get it. Right, so, actually, no. Oh, do I have to do it here? Can I, can I not do it over here? I have the bakery nearer to the castle. Because it's got, like, the cooking places and everything. Right, uh, bakery, bakery, bakery. Baker. Begin construction. Weekly profit increase coming soon. More visitors. Okay, so you can make money from this in the future. Baker provides you with a source of endless delicious bread. Attract more visitors to your village. Increase your weekly profits. Lovely. Okay. Hello, Harbinger. Hope you're well. About the bakery. How is that going? I've started the construction. Great, it looks like we need 75 pine logs, 25 stone, and 50 wheat. Not to worry, I'll help you with some of the resources with this construction job. Here, take all of this. It should help you get most of the way there. You just need to gather a bit of each resource. With those resources, you need 30 more pine logs, 10 more stone, and 15 more wheat. Understood, I'll gather those resources. 